My name? What good will that do you, huh? There's no shortage of shiny treasure here, or fine women. <laughs> From my understanding, Brigand Boss is literally just some unnamed boss, or well, he was called Brigand Boss, that all literally takes out the start of Shadows of Lentia, and the reason he became a meme was solely because he was included on the CYO ballot. Is that correct? Otherwise, I have no clue why this guy is even here. For what it's worth, the Brigand Boss did not cheat his way in like uh, some. He placed 212th in CYL2 out of 800 something characters, and in CYL6 this year, he placed 165th. Some are thinking he got in because A, he actually is placing pretty high, and B, there's just not a lot of characters left in Shadows of Lantia, hence why they used the Ascended spot on Celica as well. Who knows the real reason, but anyways, we'll be talking about the Brigand Boss since he is our newest Grand Hero Battle Unit. Brigand Boss is an ex infantry unit with 45 HP, 42 attack, 35 speed, 35 defense, and 24 res. He has attack and res super boon, so you can get more damage or try to beef up his defense and power. The Brigand Boss's stats are not exactly standout, and we'll see why in just a bit. For his weapon, BB is bringing the Vulture Axe Plus, which is a reskin of the Plagian Axe. If the unit is not adjacent to an ally, inflict penalty on foes attacking defense during combat equal to 5, plus any current penalty on each of those stats. Calculated independently. The Plagian Axe has been a pretty solid inheritable weapon for the past year, so Vulture Axe should be welcomed in just fine. It's not exciting, but if you merged up Plagian Male Chris, then this might be a good surprise for you. Vulture Axe requiring you to be solo, and it's going to inflict minus 5 attack and defense on the foe. If the foe has attack and defense debuffs, then you inflict the same amount during combat, which can really make the Vulture Axe user quite tanky, and you start to deal a lot more damage. For example, if the foe has minus 6 attack and defense, in total, Vulture Axe inflicts minus 11 attack and defense during combat, stacking with the minus 6 attack and defense debuff. That is a lot of stats. This weapon can be quite powerful, but absolutely requires setup. If you don't bring attack and defense debuffs, then it's not that special. For the rest of his base kit, Brigand Boss does not get anything exciting. He got Dragon Fang for his high base attack. He has chill speed and defense 2, which doesn't even match the attack and defense debuffs he wants for his weapon. Last, he has attack smoke, which does work with the Vulture Axe, but only after you've already gotten into a fight. It's not bad, but we really want upfront debuffs to take advantage of the weapon from the beginning. Not the worst or most synergistic base kit, but there are certainly better options. If you want to merge up the Brigand Boss for the Neutral Nature, he will get plus 1 HP, attack, and speed. That's not bad if you want to go for an offensive build. He does have attack and res super boons, so either of those are fine to grab. If you care about arena scoring, you're going to need one of those super boons to hit the next BST bin. Speaking of arena score, well, Brigand Boss not only comes right before we probably get Gen 7 BST, but we also just got Atlas as an instant demote. Atlas comes with the training BST boost, so he has 187 BST, which means he will compete with the next generation's Axe Infantry. Again, this is only really important if you care about maximizing arena score. However, Atlas also has very similar stats to Brick and Boss, and, well, he basically outdoes them in every stat except one point of defense. That kinda hurts to see. Now, the quote unquote catch says difference is that Atlas was demoted instantly, and we got no free copies. Brigand Boss is a heroic grail unit, and if you have the grounds, you can plus 10 them eventually in a couple updates. How many people are going to have plus 10 Atlases by that time? Now, Atlas isn't the only competitive comparison because Brigand Boss is also pretty similar to Gonzalez, the other Grand Hero Battle Axe Infantry for this year. They have the same attack and speed, and Gonzalez trades defense for res for HP. You then have Young Boyd, who has slightly higher attack and speed, but he also has the Large War Axe, which is insane on odd turns. If you want it in a unique Axe Infantry unit with the high HP, good attack and speed stat spread, then Boyd is your go-to. If you only cared about speed, then Ninja Shamir is our only Gen 6 option that reaches the 40 speed mark. I'm not even looking at past Hero Grow or Demoted Axe Infantry because that's just how common these units are. All of these units here are from the past year, and you already know for sure we're going to get a bunch of Gen 7 ones eventually. Atlas kind of being a sneak peek of that as well. Brigand Boss is just here for the meme, and they didn't really give him any special treatment. In terms of playstyle and builds, the Vulture Axe does require you to A, be solo, and B, have some kind of attack and defense debuffs on the field. You can keep chill speed and defense and attack smoke on a budget because there are not really a lot of other cheap options. Chill attack and defense would have been better, but that's on two seasonal units, so not really a budget option, and not really that great regardless. 
to fill in the A slot and secret seal slot, you can run double solo skills. The only solo A skill that's on a non 5 star unit is Urk's Speed and Red Solo 3. If you have unwanted copies, you can put together the double solo build, which is fine for the Vulture Axe. I think it's worth chasing for some extra speed, even if Brigand Boss isn't that fast naturally. He's in that weird speed tier where if you don't grab more speed, then you lose out on getting more doubles, and he'll get doubled a lot more, which starts to negate the benefits of the Vulture Axe's attack debuffs. Generally speaking, without premium skills, you are going to rely on teammates to bring the debuffs, and in that case, you can opt for offensive skills like Wrath or Desperation, maybe Vantage. Heavy Blade would be nice with his high attack, and Panic Ploy can double up the problems for the enemy if they bring Field Buffs. Plagian Axe really started to shine once Attack and Defense Menace got introduced into the game because it basically fulfills the Attack and Defense debuff requirement for the weapon. Vulture Axe is no different, and Attack and Defense Menace is just a great skill regardless. While you can continue with the double solo skills of your choosing, since we have field buffs from the Menace skill, you could also run a tier 4 ideal A skill. It has some issues if you lose HP and your field buff gets neutralized, but it can also give you stats in situations where you aren't solo. As for B skills, you got some options like lows, no follow up, or even dodge if you're feeling spicy. If you wanted to try a slightly awkward way to get attack and defense debuffs, you could use attack and defense ruse. It's not the best on the Vulture Axe user because you need to be solo anyway, but maybe if you have other rally users on your team, it can work out. For some other weapons and skills, Brick and Boss at least is lucky enough to be an axe user. There are so many options, and I would definitely suggest Somerset's new Seahorse Axe for its free fall attack. It could work without stacking speed, and you could pair it with things like Heavy Blade 4, Sturdy Surge, or even Steady Breath because the follow up is for both phases. Honestly, with this inheritable axe on hand, Crooker Pose is kinda dead to me for axe builds. If you did want to go for faster weapons, you got the Rain Axe from Gonzalez and the Springy Axe from Spring Soleil. The two Ninja Brave Axes can get you some quad hits, and Bringin' Boss is another good user of the Shuriken Cleaver because he has enough speed to get the damage or the extra damage against slower tanks. As for the defensive axes, you got the Deck Swabber slash Unbound Axe, which is another solo weapon, but it basically has low attack and defense built in. Guard Axe can be an option, you got the Stealth Axe for damage reduction, and then there's the Spirited Axe for cooldown. To pair these weapons, infantry have a lot of C skills like Times Pulse, the new buffed up tier 4 ults are looking really good, and Attacker Speed Smoke 4. Brigand Boss can utilize all of these with various builds. Like for a dodge build, for example, you can run Springy Axe, Attack and Speed Ideal 4, and Attack and Speed Oath 4. We got Distant Counter, we got Tier 3 Dual Stances, Bonds, Forms, Unity, and so on. Lots of options are on the table. So, should you promote Brigand Boss to 5 stars? Well, he's another Berserker type axe unit with very high base attack, some speed to work with, and then good HP. He has some decent defense and res too, so you can shore up his defenses if you wanted a bulkier build. As for his base kit, nothing special. Vulture Axe is good, but it's just the Plugin Axe in another form, and that's already on Heroic Rail Unit. Overall, it basically feels like they added Brigand Boss to the game and decided that was good enough. You could argue he kind of got immediately outclassed by Alice, although it is fair to say that Brigand Boss can be gotten via Heroic Rails while you're basically gotta pray to RNG for Atlas copies. However, Brigand Boss's stats are also pretty comparable to Gonzalez, and then we have Young Boyd if you wanted a more standout Axe Infantry unit via Heroic Rails. Thankfully with his stats and as an axe user, Brigand Boss has a lot of customization. There are a lot of inheritable axes that are free to play obtainable, and infantry units have a fair amount of skill options. You can stack speed, you can go pure attack, or you can go hunk down with some defensive skills. For what it's worth, Brigand Boss falls in that same category as Gonzalez. Nothing too special, but if you wanted to use him, then at least you have a lot of build freedom. That's all I gotta say about the Brigand Boss, and while he's not terrible, I would have liked to see a little more uniqueness. Maybe come out with another inherent Axe that wasn't already on a Heroic Grail unit, or maybe they just go full meme with his stats. They don't really do that anymore, although I understand why. That's all I got for this video, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.